Okay, so our next speaker is Hu Sheng Fai from uh, Chongqing Normal University. Oh, and he will talk to us about um, surrogate optimization for black box function. So the floor is yours. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. And, uh, and I'm uh, yeah, very uh, happy to share some, you know, some recent research in this area. And basically, this is um, something like a continue uh, what we did last year and uh, in this uh, 2019 Wombat, and uh, we had some new <laughs> results. Okay, so um, the topic is about how to find the uh, approximate global uh, minimizer of uh, a, uh, a computational expensive black box functions. So, okay, so let's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is my outline. And uh, I will first to give this a formulation of uh, the problem under consideration. And then I'm going to um, introduce this, uh, we call response surface method. And then we go to a uh, constrained optimization problem. I mean, uh, with, with uh, like uh, inequality constraints. And uh, the final part, uh, part is about bi-level optimization problems. And we had some, um, okay, we had some a numerical algorithm to solve bi-level um, problems in this type. Okay, so this black box uh, um, problem. All right, so let's um, look at, uh, uh, the, the, if this formulation. So actually it looks very, uh, very simple. And like uh, we have a uh, objective function fx, which is um, computationally expensive. And so we have to, you know, limit our function evaluations. I mean, we have to make the number of function evaluations very small, otherwise we cannot uh, do this uh, job. So um, in this case, and also we don't have uh, a gradient information and uh, uh, that gave us, uh, I mean, uh, many difficulties. So we have to think of uh, how to solve this kind of problem efficiently. And uh, okay, there is one example like in the deep learning. In deep learning, we have uh, this kind of uh, problem like in hyperparameter optimization. Uh, in fact, uh, this hyperparameter optimization in deep learning can be regarded as a bi-level problem, in fact. So uh, we can have a look at uh, um, this uh, formulation here. For example, if um, this is uh, like a, um, a function to evaluate your uh, like your uh, deep learning network. Okay, then here you have X and you have theta. Theta is a kind of a lower uh, variable and X is the upper one. So uh, theta is this parameter you have to tune uh, in your uh, structure. And X is the hyperparameter, like the struct, this, uh, like the number of layers all and there's a, a number of nodes in each layer and something like that. So anyway, this is a, a very typical uh, problem. I mean, in my uh, work and we uh, actually use this as a, a good example in today's uh, big data error. Okay, anyway, so um, for this kind of problem, we specifically, uh, specifically focus all this, we call response surface method. So that means we try to use a, a surrogate or we can say uh, an interpolation function to replace the original black box uh, function. The idea is if we are giving some uh, distinct points and if we know their values, certainly in here, is not very large. Uh, normally when we do this kind of problem and it might be 20 points or you know even fewer than that. Okay, 
of course, it depends. It, it depends on the dimension of your problem. Okay. So now, after we have this uh, uh, data set, then we can build this uh, uh, this function. Like uh, uh, this is actually very simple. You uh, we call them um, a radio basis function, and here we have a polynomial tail um, to enhance some theoretical property of this uh, 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 function here. And, and uh, normally phi can be taken from these five uh, functions. And actually it's cubic and the same plate spline is the most uh, commonly used uh, candidate here. Okay, so um, as there's a degree for polynomial, normally we use a linear one. Linear one will be <laughs> enough to make things simple. So uh, basically we use this kind of uh, uh, function to do this uh, uh, approximation or we do this, uh, or we can say do this uh, uh, interpretation. Okay, so uh, if you have this kind of uh, function, we, we need to determine uh, the coefficients like lambda i and also this b and a, this has to be decided. And to do this is actually is easy. If if these uh, given points are spread uh, quite uh, normal, then with uh, a uh, yeah very few numbers of uh, points, we can determine these coefficients uh, uniquely. So just by solving a, a linear system of equations, we can have them. Okay. So this is how we solve this. Uh, uh, I mean, how to build these linear equations then to solve, then we get these coefficients. So in that sense, we uh, actually, uh, we can have a unique uh, an interpolation function, you know, to approximate this actual black box um, function. Okay, um, there is a few, I mean, uh, popular methods in this direction. One is, you know, proposed by uh, Jones in 1996, actually more than 24 years ago. And uh, the idea is uh, uh, try to, you know, select the points uh, one by one. And the next point is going to be the point that can minimize the bumpness of this um, in, uh, interpolation function. So anyway, the idea is we choose the a new sample point one by one. And uh, also uh, when you choose a point, it has to satisfy some, you know, minimization criteria. So here we can say, okay, this point uh, has to be the point that minimizes this function. This one, this function is actually a measurement of uh, the bumpness of this uh, uh, surface. Okay, so that's the idea because in the beginning, we have some initial points to build this um, uh, interpolation function. Then we have to choose more points because only initial points are not enough. So we have to adapt, uh, adaptively choose more points to do the approximation. Okay, so this is a, um, a function to measure the bumpness. And then, okay, uh, there, are there are techniques is I mean, not very, I, I would say not very flexible. And uh, because here uh, a function Fn star is used and Fn star uh, supposed to be the estimate of the global minimum of F. And this one actually is not known beforehand because we are going to bind them actually. But anyway, um, you can give a very uh, coarse estimate to do this. And Fn is ch chosen using some cycles. And anyway, um, I mean, I, I will skip this technical details just to tell you this um, some general idea. Okay, so another method is, uh, you know, we don't use this uh, uh, estimate of this uh, optimal function values, uh, but we using, uh, you know, this, uh, kind of a constrained formulation. So to choose the next point, we need to show like problem eight. 
the Sn is your uh, surrogate. And here you solve this kind of constraint problem. Then you get to the next point. And here this actually, this inequality constraints considered the distance between the uh, known sample points here. Okay, xj is, is the uh, existing sample points. Okay, so this here, it requires the distance of the new sample point and this existing sample point uh, greater than some threshold value here. Okay, so okay, anyway, that's an idea to balance local search and the global search. Okay, then uh, there are also other uh, methods. So in standard for solve such, such a uh, sub, I would say a uh, sub problem here. And someone proposed just, you know, to generate points uh, using stochastic uh, like uh, variables. I mean, randomly to generate a point, we call them candidate points, then we choose from the, the candidate points instead of solving that kind of uh, uh, optimization problem. Okay. So this is also another um, way to do the job. And when, after you generate these uh, um, points to choose from all these points, uh, a new sample point, you have to uh, consider two factors. One is the function value of this uh, surrogate. And another factor is uh, the distance between the new point and the previous points. Because when you do this um, uh, sampling, you don't want all your points as, you know, to stay together. Certainly that's not a good choice. You have to have uh, representatives in different areas. You know, try to, if you want to have a better, uh, you know, approximation of this black box uh, problem. Okay. Um, and also another way is uh, instead of solve this um, constrained um, optimization problem, you can also use some kind of a penalty idea to put this kind of uh, distance uh, requirements into the objective function here. And um, you know you, you can build this kind of uh, uh, function then to multiply this one into objective function. And here this Tn, I mean this uh, uh, power of this term can be adjusted adaptively during this process. Okay, this is a already existing method. And uh, what we did is we, uh, we find out, I mean, in all these existing methods, um, to, to find these uh, parameters is very difficult in fact. And uh, they actually use some uh, cycle, uh, very, I mean, uh, not flexible cycle to choose this uh, kind of a power. And this will bring a uh, very bad behavior when you do numerical uh, experiments. So then we decided to choose this kind of uh, thing adaptively. And also we consider the distance between, um, uh, you know, the global minimizer of two uh, uh, of two surrogates. So if this uh, distance is uh, small, then we can take a new uh, point as uh, I mean, and a, a okay, we take a new sample point as the global minimizer of these uh, surrogates. Anyway, that's another. I mean, some way to improve uh, people's work. Okay. Um, and here I will talk a little bit about this surrogate as assisted uh, evolutionary optimization. So, um, uh, evolution optimization methods are popular actually for black box uh, problems. I, I know um, many people in this uh, workshop are not doing this, but anyway, uh, I hope you are not to look down all these kind of techniques. I mean, in, in the engineering practice, um, in the years I like using this kind of method to solve problems. So anyway, um, if you use a surrogate assisted 
uh, like evolutionary optimization, it will help you to find, um, you know, this uh, kind of uh, a black box uh, problem to, to solve them are very uh, good. I mean, a, a good method anyway to solve this kind of problem because um, this method doesn't require gradients. Okay, so it's quite uh, good in a sense. And here, what we did is we uh, use particle swarm optimization idea to help us to choose the next sample points. So as as you know, you know the critical um, thing in the whole response uh, surface method, or we can say the surrogate optimization method, is how to choose your next sampling point. Okay, so use this. Um, on um, particle storm optimization, we can, uh, this will give us some idea how to choose your next uh, points, okay. And also, um, this year we developed some uh, methods based on uh, clustering, and in a sense that uh, when we uh, <clears throat> generate, you know, some uh, candidates points, then from these points, we have to choose the unique one because we don't, we cannot afford to choose, uh, you know, more than like uh, three or more than two points. So we we, we have to limit uh, the number of points we choose in each iteration. In this sense, we here we use this clustering techniques here, and um, combined with the uh, differential evolution, and um, to find the next sample point. We choose these cluster centers as a new sampling points, and uh, numerically it gives uh, uh, quite good examples. So compare our method with um, with the current state of art uh, method, this die cost. In fact, this one is a very good one currently, and over one we call LS. So we compare this uh, method with um, uh, die cost. And uh, I mean, we choose uh, 33 uh, functions. These are actually are typical uh, functions in you know this this area. And uh, we found our method can, and you know, in most cases, we are faster than them. And also, it, especially in um, uh, this, actually, is for small dimension problem. And uh, for I mean, this is a progress curve, okay? If you saw a curve is under uh, someone else curve, then your method is better, okay? And also we talk about um, high dimensional problem. So if for high dimensional problem, our method is uh, even much better than this uh, um, die cost, okay? So uh, this is actually some preliminary results and uh, it shows our method is uh, quite a promising, okay? Because we combine this um, um, DE, we call this matter heuristic method with um, uh, this uh, machine learning uh, techniques, this clustering stuff, okay. All right, and then I talk about this constraint optimization problem here. And this constraint, constraints means um, we have for example, here like this, we have also um, black box constraints for the problem. And this GIX is constrained. And also this might be a computationally expensive function here. So to solve them uh, is not an easy task. And uh, the biggest problem is how to find your uh, feasible points to start with. And the idea here is, I mean, this is uh, the paper in 2014 on people, uh, other people's work. In fact, uh, they uh, use um, SN to replace this GI. Uh, they use this the radio basis, radio basis function to replace the GI. And then they build this kind of a problem. And, to, you know, they regard the solution of this one as a, a, a feasible point of the original problem. So in practical, this always uh, 
Uh, of course, it cannot guarantee to have a feasible point, but uh, it works quite well. Okay. And uh, another way to solve this problem is uh, similarly, you have this kind of constraints. Remember here we have a like a uh, artificial variable or actually this is a parameter to make um, because all the functions are approxim uh, approximation to your actual function. So you have to uh, make up for that. So you use a, <clears throat> a number here, you plus this one and require this uh, inequality. And here this objective is different with the previous one because here it uses this kind of thing and here you use this sum. But anyway, the idea are very similar. And during your optimization process, you may, uh, you have to use this kind of techniques again and again to make sure um, you are having a feasible point. Okay, all right, so um, finally, I'm uh, going to talk a little bit about bi-level problems. And for bi-level optimization problems, we know that uh, um, this is a very difficult problem. And uh, <clears throat> for this kind of problem, somehow we can regard uh, them as a black box problem in the sense that uh, after you are giving a upper level uh, variable, then you will have to solve this uh, lower level problem to find out the XL, right? This is a, the bi-level structure. And if you regard them as a function, that means a mapping from XU to XL. And this one, um, I mean, is a kind of a black box mapping. You cannot find, normally you cannot have a um, analytical form for that. So anyway, um, black box optimization idea can be used to solve uh, these bi-level problems, at least for some difficult problems, when you don't have this uh, nice structure. Okay, so for this kind of problem, uh, for example, we can <clears throat> have uh, like a four algorithms to do the job. You have, uh, uh, okay, if you talk about the differential uh, evolution, anyway, the so DA means this mat matter heuristic method, SA means the surrogate assisted method. So you, you can, okay, the upper level can be replaced as well by a surrogate and also upper, uh, this lower level can also be replaced. Then you, you have this combination and certainly you have four different combinations, all right. So, and I just want to show some, okay, um, preliminary results. When we use a uh, surrogate to solve this kind of problem, and uh, and these uh, and test problems are well known problems in this area. Uh, so anyway, uh, using surrogate, uh, we can have a uh, I mean quite good results. And uh, here we actually we also used this clustering techniques. And actually, I mentioned in this uh, one level problem based. All that we have um, uh, some results, and uh, of course uh, we're going to do more and to you know uh, to make our algorithm working even better. So okay, um, I give uh, some conclusion. So this uh, response surface methods with um, or we can call surrogate method, uh, optimization uh, using radio basis function uh, interpolation are very prominent, and also. Uh, this method combined with the meta heuristic algorithms are quite effective. And also this can also be used for um, constrained problems and also for multiple objective optimization problems. And we are also doing this uh, right now for multiple objective functions. And uh, there are some references for that. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your talk, Fusheng. Uh, let's thank open you. 
to some questions now. Okay. Sorry, can I ask a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Um, uh, so first of all, Fushen, yeah, thanks yes, very hello. much. That was quite uh, <laughs> interesting. So uh, okay, I have thank two you. questions. Yeah. So the first yeah. question is about, um, I think it's formula five. That's where you do, okay. uh, you, you solve a system, I think linear system. And uh, yeah. uh, yes. And you, yeah, you said that uh, it has a unique solution. So yeah. uh, I yeah. just <clears throat> wondering why you think it has a unique solution because okay. you can uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So unique solution means, okay, you have to have a non-singular matrix here. Yeah. Uh, this one, yeah. To make that um, non-singular, and you, okay, normally what required is you have to have the D plus one point, at least D plus one, D is the dimension, then D plus one points. And then if these points are, are spread, I mean, not that bad, then normally you will have these conditions uh, hold. So, and uh, theoretically you can prove this kind of thing. So. Yeah, D plus one is uh, the, in fact, the minimum number you required and the normally, yeah, it, it holds, okay. Yeah, but that probably relies on some um, uh, properties of your basis functions. They should be, say, form uh, system or something, no? Okay, uh, certainly the radio basis function because we put a polynomial tail there and it, it depends on your uh, that's why we put this tail, you can see here. Okay, so if without this, then you cannot uh, have this unique solution. Yeah, very good point. Mm -hmm. uh, so normally radio basis function is uh, actually referred to the earlier first part, and not, <laughs> not this part. So to, to make this uh, theoretically nice, you need this polynomial to help you to, to do the job. Okay. All right. Mm. Thank Sorry, you. and one more question. Um, so when you are talking, I think already about constraint um, optimization. So yeah. you have a sum and then uh, after that you have max, that's from my memory, yeah. zero. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 I will yeah. put yeah. in that uh, screen, yes. Yeah, so basically my question, why do you need to square it? Because uh, I understand mm. sometimes people yeah. square because they want <laughs> yeah. positive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, Nadia. So, you know, the idea here, certainly if without a square, you mathematically, you have the same problem, um, but with a square, um, you can make the, this uh, uh, property nicer, like uh, it will okay. be continuous okay. differentiable. So numerically, mm -hmm. yeah, it works doing that. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Maybe enough time for one more quick question, if there is. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, which was, you mentioned in the unconstrained case that your yeah. metaheuristic, your clustering one, was be particularly yeah. better yeah. than Dicor's for high dimensional problems. Do you have an idea uh, why high dimensions work well in your case? Yeah, yeah OK. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, this. Um, Okay, it's right here. Mm. Okay, this is um, kind of, uh, certainly it's not easy to, you know, to have a very clear idea. So, so we, based all our numerical results, we have uh, uh, like, uh, okay, for high dimensional problem, here we are using like 200 uh, dimension. And uh, this black box, uh, suppose they are black box problems and it's it's better uh, in, in this, uh, um, like in this later stage. Uh, um, the vision behind this might because, you know, uh, using this clustering um, for this um, high dimensional um, problem, you may, you know, to, Sort of to um, to balance what you found. You, you know, using uh, clustering uh, means that uh, you are not using uh, the, these uh, uh, points you found. You you have some compromise in a sense. Yes, you use cluster centers, not the points. 
um, pre, you know, you, you already have them in your hand. So you have some compromise. And maybe in hard measurement case, this compromise uh, gives better uh, points. And, and also you consider this combination with the uh, DE uh, algorithms because DE also this kind of meta heuristic method give you only some, some idea of uh, where, uh, you know, these um, potential good points located in. So in this sense, it might be something behind it. You know, we are also <laughs> looking at why uh, in hard dimensional, it, it works um, much faster compared, you know, this die course method. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I think we should move on to the next speaker. So thanks again, Fuxia.